Hi guys, it's Michelle and today's video is going to be all about Brittany Murphy. So honestly, this video is probably gonna have a lot of content So I kind of just want to jump straight into it But we're gonna be talking essentially about the mysterious death of Brittany Murphy So Brittany Murphy was born on November 10th 1977 in Atlanta, Georgia. Her parents are Sharon Murphy and Angelo Bartolotti but Her parents divorced when she was only two years old and her father wasn't really present in a lot of her life Brittany spent most of her life with her mother and they actually moved to Edison, New Jersey And that's where she was raised until she was about 13 years old when her mom and her moved to Los Angeles so that Britney could pursue her career in acting. From a young age, it was super obvious that Britney was incredibly talented. She was so talented that no one really knew which direction she would go in because she could be a singer, she could be an actress, and she could be a dancer. She was a triple threat and she wanted to be famous. A lot of this video is going to reference the HBO documentary, which is what happened to Britney Murphy. This documentary was actually super eye-opening and interesting. I really recommend it, but we're gonna be talking about a lot of points that happened in there and just some stuff in general so in the HBO documentary I thought it was really interesting her old acting coach really pointed out the fact that Britney's mother did not make Britney go into this life this was something that she really wanted to do she wanted to be a star her mom genuinely sacrificed everything to help her get there so once Britney moved to Los Angeles she did a couple like TV show appearances until her breakout role in Clueless as Ty in 1995 obviously this was the most iconic movie probably ever and Britney really excelled from this point forward she was now launched into the movie scene which is exactly where she wanted to be so Britney unfortunately was told by many Hollywood producers that she wasn't pretty enough which I think is so ridiculous and I like actually really frustrates me a lot of Hollywood producers told her that she wasn't pretty enough to be a leading lady and that she completely needed to change her look up to be more sexy and hot and this is just so upsetting because I think Britney Murphy is beautiful and I also think that she was just such a light in this world like she was so talented like you could just tell she was radiant she was just amazing I love her and talk more about that later but Brittany ended up losing a lot of weight during this time she bleached her hair she was dressing completely differently than before according to a lot of her friends she became very unrecognizable so this began to concern a lot of Brittany's close friends including Kathy and Jimmy Kathy and Brittany worked really close together on King of the Hill Kathy had mentioned to her like asking Brittany if she was okay because of the weight loss that she had. Britney told Kathy the Hollywood producers said that she had to change her appearance if she wanted to get any roles as a leading lady. This time period, it was really hard for Britney because she was constantly scrutinized by the tabloids. Because of this weight loss and this look change, people would assume a lot of things like that she was doing drugs or that she had an eating disorder. Kathy and Jimmy also claims that, you know, after these rumors about Britney were in the tabloids, that Britney called her one day just absolutely sobbing because she claimed that none of the rumors were true. Britney also had two broken engagements during this time and she had just ended a very public relationship and had a very public breakup with Ashton Kutcher. During this really difficult time for Britney, in 2006, she actually ended up starting to date a man named Simon Monjack, who was a British screenwriter. Simon was like kind of the main topic of this HBO Max documentary, which is something that I had not really researched too much of before. I made a video on Britney Murphy five years ago and honestly, it was terrible. Like, it's just not good. It lacked a lot of research and it lacked talk about her husband because I didn't want to blame her husband because we're going to see later. Obviously, her husband passes away as well. Kind of stir blame elsewhere, which we're going to talk about later. I think this HBO documentary was really eye-opening and I have quite a few theories as to what I think happened. Simon and Brittany got married in 2007. This was when Brittany's friends began to be really concerned with or this relationship. According to everyone around Brittany, Brittany, her mother, and Simon were constantly locked up in the Rising Glen Road house that she passed away in. According to a lot of Brittany's close friends, this was when they kind of stopped hearing from Brittany. They claimed that she was constantly locked up in that house with Simon. Locked up sounds dramatic, by the way. I'm not saying like she wasn't allowed to leave or anything, um, but she was just constantly in the house. They stayed in the house all day, pretty much. If she wasn't working, they were there. Simon seemed a bit controlling. Basically, Brittany and her mother were both not contactable unless they were going to contact Simon first. Simon even disconnected the landlines. If you wanted to contact Brittany, you had to go through Simon. I feel like it's never really a great thing. So a filmmaker, Allison Burnett, who apparently had experiences with Simon, he claims that Simon is an 
incredible liar. He lied about several things, like having cancer, absolutely ridiculous things that were not true at all, and everyone believed him. Like, he was very great at telling a story. And seeing this relationship between him and Britney really concerned him. He ended up deciding to call Britney's agency, and when he called Britney's agency, they were like, we were all fired because Simon is now her manager, her makeup artist, her agent, everything. He takes care of everything. And obviously, I just feel like that's not healthy. So Alison Burnett actually ended up contacting the National Enquirer to get this story out because he needed Britney to know that this was not a good relationship. Simon was not a good guy. So someone that I found very interesting that they had interviewed in this HBO documentary is a woman named Elizabeth Ragsdale, and she is the mother of Simon's child. So Simon and Elizabeth were engaged, and Elizabeth claimed that one night she did not want to sleep with Simon, and he was upset by this and he broke down and basically cried to her saying that he had spinal cancer and it would one day make him sterile so he just wanted to have a baby with her immediately and so she ended up sleeping with him even though she didn't want to because she felt bad for him after this sob story about how he has the spinal cancer and will someday be sterile from the treatment. Elizabeth was also completely isolated like Brittany from her friends, her family. Simon had kind of just taken over. Simon was traveling one day and she tried to call him but it didn't go through like she wasn't able to reach him so she ended up calling his mother. His mother told Elizabeth that he had completely lied about having spinal cancer. He did not have spinal cancer and in fact he already had a new girlfriend. So after Simon and Brittany got married, Elizabeth grew very concerned, but Simon, you know, paid her off to keep her quiet. He even offered her to buy a house on the HBO Max documentary when she began to actually talk about her relationship with Simon, which is pretty eye-opening to the potential relationship that Simon could have had with Brittany. Towards the end of Brittany's life, she worked on a movie called Across the Hall. The director was really struggling to work with Brittany. He claimed that, like, she wasn't herself. She didn't seem like she was when, during like the audition process or the casting process. She would have to have her lines fed to her and it was super unlike Britney to be like that. Britney would come in in really good spirits but then she would have like lunch or something with Simon and she would come back and be completely different which is honestly just really really sad. I think something else that's really interesting is a personal trainer in the Los Angeles area named Harley Pasternak trained Britney and Simon. When he met Britney he claimed that she was clearly under the influence of something. When he he contacted Britney's team to like help, you know, figure out times for her to come work out. He was also told that when Britney married Simon, they were all fired and that he was her manager. So according to the HBO documentary, they even got to a point where a lot of Britney's close friends kind of gave an intervention to Britney and her mother being like, this Simon person is very concerning. It seems like they got married because he had overstayed his visa and that was why he wanted to marry Britney. And it was clear that like there was something weird going on in this situation, but Britney and her mother both said that they believed Simon and they loved him and they didn't think he was a liar. And before you're like, how the fuck can that happen? I feel like it's very easy to be manipulated by people. I think it's really easy for people who are super manipulative to do what they do. That's what they do. They manipulate people and make them believe them, make them love them, whatever the case may be. And. It's just sad that this happened. So on December 20th of 2009, Brittany Murphy sadly passed away. The doctor who conducted the autopsy claims that Brittany died from severe, severe pneumonia and anemia. She had no signs of any alcohol use or any drug use besides prescription medication. This answer honestly didn't satisfy anybody. I feel like a lot of people still have questions about this to date because it's very strange because had she had severe pneumonia, she would have been extremely ill and she was sick. They had gone to Puerto Rico to film a movie that Brittany ended up getting kicked off of because of Simon, her, her mother and Simon. And they all got sick with like a flu and Brittany just never recovered. So her mother was the one who found her unresponsive in the bathroom. They were a little late on starting the CPR, but not that I think that's really like suspicious or anything. Cause I think in a situation like that, like you can't really determine what someone would do. People deal with stressful situations very differently, which is why certain people are EMTs and certain people are not. So I don't judge them for doing that or anything that they did because that would be a very 
scary situation and I don't know, you know, not, most people don't know what the right thing is to do in that kind of situation. I also think it's important to note that on Simon's nightstand, there were over 90 bottles of prescription medication. Some of the bottles had Simon's name, some of them had Brittany's name, but some of them had third party names. And the LAPD believes that these were aliases. The pharmacy wouldn't get suspicious, but basically, you know, if you're famous or if you have money, you could definitely find doctors who are willing to write prescriptions that maybe you don't need. Initially, Simon did not want an autopsy done on Brittany, which is something that people found very suspicious. However, he spoke about this about a month later on the infamous Larry King interview that Larry King did with Simon Monjack and Brittany's mother, Sharon Murphy. A lot of people thought this interview was strange. I personally didn't think it was that weird. I felt like Simon was a bit controlling in the whole situation and I definitely agree with that but I feel like I in my previous video kind of thought the mom was maybe guilty of something because it is just a weird scenario where obviously Brittany passed away and then later her husband did as well so I feel like a lot of people pointed fingers at Sharon Murphy but I don't really think that anymore at all like I'm not saying it's not a possibility anything is possible but I kind of don't think so, especially after hearing her like 911 call. It was just really sad and really, really so hard to watch. And then this Larry King interview as well, just don't get that vibe from her. And I'm not sure, but that's just what I'll say. I'd like to hear your opinions, but let's keep going. So the driver from that night at the Larry King interview, the one who, he was like the driver who drove Sharon Murphy and Simon Monjack, he felt compelled to contact Ed Winter, who was the detective on this case. The driver claimed that after this tearful interview that they had had on Larry King that they kind of came into the car with the energy and made it feel like to him at least that the interview was completely a hoax which I'm not saying that that's true or not but I do think it's a little bit strange because obviously this driver is not getting anything out of doing that and if he really felt compelled to report it I feel like something strange must have happened in that car so that's just something that I guess we won't know about. So a reporter named Amber Ryland actually was one reporter who Simon ended up having contact with, which he didn't really like to contact any of the reporters, but she gave him flowers on Christmas day. And for some reason that made him call and she was let in to the house. Amber Ryland had heard many bad things about Simon, but she decided to meet with him nonetheless. She claims the way that he spoke about Britney was incredibly odd. She claims that he took a lot of credit for her career being like, I made her wear this, I made her do that, which was strange because obviously he has no credit for her career whatsoever. He also told her that he knew that people assumed that he was super controlling. To him, he felt like him and Britney were soulmates and it wasn't like that at all. And Amber Ryland was let into Simon and Britney's house, which there's like an exclusive Exclusive, like you can watch it. She immediately was curious by all the security that Simon had. He had several cameras everywhere. Simon kind of made it seem like a conspiracy theory that we'll talk about later as well, that him and Brittany were being watched. When Amber Ryland met Sharon, she claims that she seemed super submissive. She also noticed that the master bedroom, um, both sides of the beds had looked slept in and she asked Simon about this. And Simon claimed that sometimes Sharon would just climb into bed with him and cry and they would just cry together. It's definitely a possibility, but I guess a lot of people thought this was weird because they also did this like strange kind of photo shoot together that people got a weird vibe from. I think a lot of people assumed that they had some sort of romantic relationship. I don't know if that's true. I feel like I don't really think that's true but I guess I can see why people think that. Simon and Sharon also started the Brittany Murphy Foundation, but then had this event for it that if friends and family wanted to attend like the opening for this foundation, they had to donate, which I think is kind of weird and distasteful. So let's talk about what happened to Brittany. So Simon and Sharon claim that the day that Brittany died, she woke up having trouble breathing and she said to her mother, mom, I'm dying, I love you. This concerned Sharon, of course, but Brittany ran to the bathroom and that is where she collapsed. She was on the ground and Simon was giving her CPR until the paramedics arrived. So Simon's mother in the HBO documentary claimed that Brittany had called her a few days earlier explaining how she felt really sick. She would climb up the stairs and just felt completely exhausted and out of breath once she would get to the top of the stairs. 
years and this was out of you know the ordinary for her she asked simon's mom like am i dying and simon's mom responded like of course not but you do need to go to the doctor to see what's wrong but sadly she never did everything really changed on may 23rd 2010 when simon monjack also passed away from pneumonia and anemia as well this is when people really started thinking that something more was going on so the initial thought was maybe there was like a mold in the house or something wrong with the home the coroner however disagrees and said that there was no evidence of mold when ed winter approached sharon and said that he would have specialists come out and um test the house for mold or anything he received a call back from sharon's attorney saying that she didn't want any of this and didn't want to test the house for mold because she was selling the house anyway which obviously people found that a little suspicious after simon's death his and sharon's pr manager was actually contacted by Sharon who was showing him a bunch of diamonds and jewelry that apparently Simon had invested in. Claimed it was worth millions, but it ended up all being fake. Simon honestly just lied about a lot. Kind of the story of what happened, but now let's talk about the theories as to what could have happened and then we'll talk about what I think happened. So the theory I was really focused on in my first video five years ago was the theory that Angelo Bertolotti Brittany's father had kind of came up with. So Angelo Bartolotti had suspected that Brittany was poisoned and murdered. Once Simon died as well, he found this super strange and that was when he decided to do something about it. He decided to have his own separate autopsy done with hair samples of Brittany's. They found really high levels of heavy metals in her hair sample. This was potentially indicative that she had been poisoned with something like rat poison or something really, really toxic basically, but I believed this theory and I kind of just like took it and run with it and Angelo Bertolotti also believed this theory and so Angelo Bertolotti had this theory that Brittany and Simon had been being watched by the FBI essentially or some type of government thing um because she was apparently friends with a whistleblower who was talking about how the government was letting in terrorists illegally on purpose basically there's no proof that britney was even friends with this person i thought that it was real and that they were friends like i just assumed because her father was talking about it but apparently according to the hbo documentary it's like not even proven that she was friends with this person or knows this person at all and it's essentially kind of a far-fetched theory so the thing that made me believe that this theory wasn't true was that autopsy specialist spoke about britney's separate autopsy that was done with the hair samples and claimed that these heavy metals easily could have came from hair dye bleach hairspray, any other hair products basically, which makes so much more sense. So, but people do still believe this theory that the government was watching them and I'm not putting it past it, but I don't know if it's for the reason that they think it was or whatever the case may be. We also talked about in a previous video about how Britney Spears used to live in Britney Murphy's house and claimed that it was super haunted. So obviously some people believe that something paranormal could have happened. And a lot of people believe the mom had something to do with it as well because obviously it was a little suspicious about the mold thing and how she didn't care to have the house checked. It was also suspicious that, you know, if there were molds, why was she okay? She's an older woman, obviously. Brittany and Simon were both young. Why did they die? But she was fine. It just doesn't really make sense. So I think the main theory and the main consensus of the HBO Max documentary was that Simon was a very controlling husband. It's also assumed that it could be that potentially Simon and Brittany were both addicted to prescription pills. I think the fact that they had 90 prescription bottles is obviously a little bit concerning. I think that they got this flu while they were in Puerto Rico and Brittany just didn't recover from it and ended up passing away. I think that definitely something more sinister was going on with the sense of like how Simon was as a husband. I think it's strange that he had her in the house the whole time. I think it's strange that he made it impossible to contact her unless it was through him. I think all of that is weird. Again, him dying months later from similar causes, he was not really healthy. He had a heart attack on the plane home from Puerto Rico. He just wasn't a healthy man. And if you want to add prescription pills on top of that, plus grief, like you just never know what can happen. I think that perhaps Simon essentially let Brittany die in the sense of she was super sick. She should have seen a doctor. I don't know why no one in the house got that done. She could have been alive today for sure. At least according to the autopsy report and according to the autopsy specialists, they believe that if Brittany had gotten help and treatment for this pneumonia, she would be okay. And that's really sad. Obviously her frail size, she was very small and skinny, was probably a contributing factor, but I don't know if I believe any other conspiracy theory around it. I think it's interesting and I think it's worth mentioning if that makes sense, like, cause I think there's still mystery and they're still looking into it so many years later. 
So I think it's definitely something different probably went on. But I think it was more that she was in a relationship that essentially ended up hurting her in the end. So I don't know. I thought this documentary was really interesting and I thought the takes were really interesting. So let me know what you guys think about this. But that is it for today's video. If you guys liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. Like I said, let me know in the comments below what you guys think about these theories and what do you think happened. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts. But that is it. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram because I'm always posting really dope ass shit on there. Subscribe for new videos every week and I'll see you guys later. Bye.